Day six, you're almost through the first week. One more day and you're through the first week. In the name of Jesus, I believe you will make it. After that first week, your body is used to it. The second week is a little bit tough, but I know what's coming is a blessing. Don't give up, don't quit. You've gone, you've gone through the first week and I know God is preparing you for the second week. So stay with us, stay tuned. We're about to start. We are about to talk about a new beginning in your finances. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. The word of God says the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich and it adds no sorrow with it. Today, I want to address your wallet. And as the year has just started, 2023 is no different than any other year, my brothers and sisters, as everyone and all of us makes their New Year's resolution. Making more money is always at the top of the list with working out more. Though making more money is not a bad thing, but not applying God's principle in your finances can turn into a spike into your food. This verse that we read earlier basically says that those who ignore the word of God or God's principle, for a time they may be blessed, but the sorrow that comes with it is so expensive, it's so expensive that none can afford it. The Bible has quite a bit to say about money. In fact, there are over 2,000 biblical verses about money. There are more verses related to money than there are about heaven, hell, and prayer combine all together. Considering this fact, we know God has clearly stated money is an important topic in our lives, but not as much as important as his principle. Throughout scripture, we can clearly identify five separate financial principles that can be applied to our situations. God's money principles are transcendent and timeless, and they work in every situation every time. Number one, spend less than you make. Spend less than you earn. It sounds easy, but it's hard to do. We live in a culture of constant advertising, advertising bombardment, and our culture seek contentment. We are taught that we can and we should buy what we want, when we want, regardless of consequences. The Bible says that wealth quickly gotten dwindles away, but a mass little by little, it grows. Number two, be wise with debt. Debt always, always steals away your future. It will always come calling and it can lower our standard of living in the future. We, we must make sure that we don't presume upon the future and that we understand the true cost of what we're buying. The Bible says that the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. Number three, plan for financial margin because the unexpected, the unexpected will occur. Who's had to make an unexpected car or home repair? What about an unexpected medical bill for a broken bone when we fail to build liquidity for short-term emergencies or savings for short-term emergencies? We are creating a crack in our financial foundation. This principle applies for having a solid emergency fund and being properly insured with health, life, and disability insurance. The Bible says that go to the end, you sluggard. Observe it, its ways and it become, and become wise. Without leader, administrator, or ruler, it prepares its provision in summer. It gathers its food during harvest. So save your money for emergencies. Number four. Set long-term goals because there is always a trade-off between the short-term and the long-term. If we all operated off of long-term goals, how would that change our short-term perspective and how we spend our money? Focusing on goals that are important to us can also help us establish a clear direction on God's calling for our lives. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 14, the Bible says, I continue my pursuit towards the goal, the prize of God, towards calling in Jesus Christ. Number five, give generously because giving breaks the power of money. Yes, giving our resources to others in need is a nice thing to do. However, this principle goes so much deeper than that. 
giving breaks the power that money has over us. God calls us to trust him and giving generously forces us to do just like that. Christ is the ultimate sacrificial giver and we are called to live our life in the same manner. According to the word of God, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and whoever sows bountifully will reap bountifully. Each of us must do as already determined, without sadness or compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Besides, God is able to make every grace abundant to you, so that in all things, always having all you need, you may have an abundance for every good work. And it is written in the Bible, He scatters abroad, He gives to the poor, His righteousness endures forever. I hope these five principles will help you for 2023 and for the rest of your life. May God bless you on this first week of our fast.